Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing here with this diatomic uh, chlorine molecule first. If I draw its Lewis structure, it will look just like this. And we just have one bond here with two atoms that have exactly the same electronegativities. It's linear. This is, of course, nonpolar. It's even equal, uh, even on both sides. The pull of the of these electrons by these chlorine atoms is equal. So it's nonpolar. There's nothing to put there. For the next uh, part of this problem, we have the uh, ion thiocyanate. So we have thiocyanate. And if we were going to draw its Lewis structure, if I drew it out and double checked my formal charges, what it would look like would be this. And of course it is an ion. Now, there's something I want to point out. It is, again, just because this is an ion with a charge that does not specify that it's going to be polar or nonpolar. Uh, the charge, overall charge of the molecule, does not determine that. Uh, part of the determination is geometry, a okay? part of the determination, but not geometry alone. So let's look at this. Let's, uh, what is its axe notation? Well, this is going to be AX2. There are no lone pairs. So its electron domain and molecular geometry is linear. Okay. So the question is, is it polar or nonpolar? Well, because this is linear, it will be nonpolar, but only if the electron uh, distribution density on this side is the same as it is on this side. What would cause it to be the same if this atom and this atom were the same? In this case, this is a sulfur and this is a nitrogen. The electronegativities of these two atoms is not equal, and so there will be pulls of the electrons on this nitrogen, uh, to the nitrogen and to the sulfur, they, they will be different. It won't be equal. So even though this is linear, the pull in this direction is going to be different than the pull in this direction, and they will not cancel out. So if I find the electronegativities for these atoms, uh, I find that the electronegativity of sulfur atom is 2.58, carbon is 2.55, and nitrogen is 3.04. You see that these values are not the same. So there is a large dipole moment or bond moment towards the nitrogen from, uh, from the side of the carbon on these electrons here being shared between the two. And, and not really much of one at all. See that the difference in electronegativity between these two atoms is not very much different at all. So let's just draw a very tiny bond moment there. You can see that because these two atoms are not the same and this molecule is not symmetrical, then what we have here is a polar molecule. And the negative side, the atom closest to the negative side, would be the nitrogen, polar nitrogen. And our last one here, let's draw methane. Let's write its ax notation. It'd be AX4, no lone pairs. So if I go to my chart, AX4, no lone pairs. Well, that's electron domain and molecular geometry of tetrahedral. And this would be a nonpolar molecule. The question is why? Well, when you look at this molecular geometry, you look at the structure of this molecule, all of the bonds are the same. Carbon, hydrogen, carbon, hydrogen, carbon, hydrogen, carbon, hydrogen. All of these bonds are spaced out equally. All of these angles are 109.5 degrees. They're all going to space out equally and evenly. And so because all of these bonds are the same, and this is pretty much symmetrical, then this is going to be a nonpolar molecule. If any of these 
atoms. Let's say this atom was a fluorine. It is now polar because these bonds are no longer symmetrical. They're, they're not the same on all sides. So because we have carbon-hydrogen bond here, carbon-hydrogen bond here, here, and here, it will be nonpolar. So let me change this back. So we have our answer here, and there will be nothing to put there.